Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick here at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. It is Wednesday, April the 12th. It's time for our daily devotion. We are continuing in the book of Hebrews, and we are still in chapter 10 today. We're starting at verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with God, with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days, after you had received the light, when you stood your ground in a great contest in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution, at other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. All right, so um, we continue on in, in the Hebrews, uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Um, a lot going on here in these uh, initial uh, verses here from 19 onward. Um, talking about entering the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. So the most holy place was the inner part of the temple or the, the sanctuary, the tabernacle, where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. And the only person who could go in there was the high priest and, and once a year. And uh, according to some early Jewish documents or commentaries, um, one known as the Mishnah, uh, the temple curtain actually consisted of two curtains that were separated by about a cubit or a few feet apart. And, you know, you, you could not expose the Holy of Holies uh, to what was beyond the curtain. So they had two curtains. So the high priest would um, enter behind the one curtain, then he would walk all the way down and then enter into the by the inner curtain to the most Holy of Holies. And that's where he would sprinkle the blood on the Ark of the Covenant to make uh, atonement for, uh, for the people's sins. And so what we're seeing now in the writer of the Hebrews is saying that Jesus has opened for us a, a new way um, uh, by his body. And um, then now we have a, a new and living way, namely uh, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, to enter this holy of holies, uh, the presence of God uh, with, uh, with blood that we can now go directly, that we have the blood of Jesus, not the blood of bulls and goats that the high priest used, but rather, we have the blood of our Savior um, that is ours by faith. And uh, he goes on to talk about, uh, let me get this here, uh, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So the word sprinkling or the verb sprinkling is used pretty much exclusively in the book of Hebrews um, as a Greek word. And, and it oftentimes refers to the sprinkling of blood, the sprinkling of blood to make atonement, either uh, on the people or on the book, um, because there it's, it's about the ratification of a covenant, like if you look back at Exodus 24. 
Moses sprinkles the blood on the people and um, pronounces the covenant is made. Um, it's also about the sprinkling of the ashes of the heifer, which we don't have time to get into today. And then the other use is this use right here in um, chapter 10, verse 22, about the sprinkling of the blood. So the, the priests, when they were ordained for service in the Old Testament, they would be sprinkled with blood. They would also be washed with, uh, with pure water. So that pure water phrase there, is the same one that's also used by the Septuagint, or the Greek translation of the Old Testament, um, in the book of Ezekiel. And we actually had this reading for our Easter vigil this past Sunday, talking about being uh, sprinkled with, uh, with clean water. And uh, this is believed to have foreshadowed baptism. And, and so we, we look at it almost the same way here, uh, this sprink sprinkling to cleanse us and this um, notion of, of having clean water applied to us. Uh, if, if, we, if we think a little bit broadly, we could possibly see the two sacraments of the church located in these verses. Of course, with the pure water, it's a very easy connection to baptism. And then with the sprinkling of blood, how the word sprinkling is often used in the book of Hebrews, uh, we have the blood of the covenant that is given to us in the body and blood of Christ in the Last Supper. And it is through the, the means of grace that we become uh, acceptable to approach God, that we become acceptable to work in service to God in our Christian vocations uh, here in this life. And, and so it, it, there's very strong sacramental overtones in what the writer to the Hebrews is uh, suggesting here for language. He then goes on to talk about um, you know, that if we deliberately keep on sinning, no sacrifice for sins is left. Meaning that, you know, you can't go back and make additional sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament with bulls and goats if you sin, because uh, now it's only through the blood of Christ that we have access to the Holy of Holies. And it's only through the blood of Christ that we have access to, to God's presence. And um, if we forsake that by being unrepentant, and uh, deliberately turning away um, and taking advantage of the forgiveness and treating it as though it is a license to sin rather than as a way for us to uh, derive comfort and security of our salvation, well, then uh, we may fall under the, uh, the judgment of this passage. And, and then he uh, finishes up talking about... Um, You know, that, that as Christians, we have not been afraid to be imprisoned, to have our property confiscated. This is what they were going through back in the first century. And <laughs> it's probably a bit of a difficult thing for us to imagine today because uh, we have rights and property rights and all these other things that prevent that. However, you know, rights are always a, a, a thing of, of man. They're always a, a construct of documents that are created by man, not God. Um, although we do know that God gives us, um, you know, our daily bread and things of the sort. But uh, these things can be taken away from us by the state and or by others who are hostile to our faith. And that's what the writer to the Hebrews is, is saying here, that we can endure such things because uh, we have been washed, we have been sprinkled, we have been cleansed, and uh, we are children of God and um, people of his kingdom. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, announcements for today. So the email newsletter went out just a little bit ago. It's got a lot of information in there, including some upcoming um, things that will be found in our worship for the Easter season. Also, there is a great recap, a one-minute recap of the Easter Vigil, professionally done. Um, so if you'd like to go through and see the aspects of this, um, as if you'd like to see the aspects of our worship on Easter morning at the Vigil, uh, I invite you to go and, and check out the email newsletter and click on the link. 
Uh, we're going to be having a VBS meeting on Tuesday, April the 25th, so uh, not quite two weeks away, but we need to get started on Vacation Bible School and, and getting ready for, uh, for this. Uh, right now, the teachers are busy getting ready for the ice cream social that's happening this coming Saturday, so that'll be from 4 to 6 p.m., and there's going to be a silent auction, hot dogs, ice cream, bounce house, pinata, so it's going to be a lot of great activities for kids. Um, please bring your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, um, you know, friends, kids, whoever. And uh, we, we invite you to come up because this is going to be a special fundraiser to put a new set of doors on the North Campus building that will be more secure and more appealing. So uh, we really could use your help for this. I, I believe that the cost we're looking for these doors is going to be around $5,000. We already have some of that, but we're looking to get closer um, and so you can help us uh, help that to happen. So um, please come this coming Saturday for that. And then confirmation is happening this Sunday night at its usual time of 6 p.m. All right, that's all the announcements I have for today. Thank you for watching our daily devotions. I will be back tomorrow, I think, as we are going to continue on in the book of Hebrews. The Lord bless your day.